Ms. Kim, this right. All right, so you can't see that. Hold on one second. So the majority of us uh, agreed that it was exponential. Why are we thinking exponential? Because you, because divide. you divide it, but you have to rewrite it as multiplication. Okay, so you have division. What are we dividing by? Seven. Okay. How can I rewrite that division by seven, though? Because that's going to make it easier to write the equation. Uh, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so to divide by a number, or a fraction in general, yeah, you can multiply it's by its smart. reciprocal. I want you to notice, what does this fraction bar really mean? Division. So you're multiplying by 1, dividing by 7. So just times 1 seventh is the same thing. you got to know how to do this. Because you will be assessed on this. So then when it came to the equation, got a lot of different answers. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of these really quickly. First off, yes, f of x is equal to y. However, I was asking you to write an equation, right? When we say f of x, we mean the output. Y is the output. That's not what I was asking for. I was asking for an equation for this right here. Multiplication is repeated what? Addition. Addition. Okay. This b times x and this m times x, and I will say it should have been a plus bx or y equals mx plus b. If all of you are indicating, hey, this is exponential, what's the issue with these equations? They're linear equations. They're linear. How do we know they're linear? Because you're multiplying. You're multiplying, which is repeated addition. addition, but there's something else. Think about the name of exponential. What should tell you this is wrong? It doesn't have an exponent in it. There is no uh, exponent with a variable. If you're going to claim that it's exponential, then you need to have an x in the exponent. However, I want to point this out. See, one, two, three, four. I think you all had notes out earlier. Yeah, four students out of three, six, nine, or three, six, eight, twelve. Who have notebooks out? Is this how you do your homework where you just sit there and you just like stare at it and struggle and have no clue what's going on? Or do you look at your notes? So then why do we not have our notes out right now? You know you're going to need your notebook out at some point today, so why not go ahead and get it out before you do the bell ringer? This should not be a magical thing that we have no clue what's going on. Get out your notes. Use them. This is an important study skill, an important school skill of learning how to use our notes to get the correct answers. These should be straightforward and easy to access. In general, what is the equation? Well, first off, does anyone see which equation might be the closest? The first one. Okay. Anyone see an issue with the first one? The exponent at the bottom? That can be okay, because technically, if I have 1 seventh to the x, that's the same thing as 1 to the x divided by 7 to the x, but 1 to anything is just going to be a 1. So that kind of works. Not really what I'm looking for. That's not a... That wouldn't be the y You sure? For those who got 0 point, or yeah, 0 0.02, where did that come from? Is that this group up here? Who got the 0 0.02? Brayden, how'd you get that? Uh, 1 divided by 7 times 1 divided by 7. Okay, notice to get the y-intercept, I need what x value? Zero. Zero. 0. So it's only an approximation, but if I take 1 and divide it by 49, that is going to be about 0 0.02, because 1 divided by 50 is 0 0.02. So that's pretty close to the y-intercept. There's another issue. 
or there's a there's an actual issue with that equation. Mm. What am I supposed to be doing to that 0 0.02 or the 1 divided by 49? Divided by 1? Well, I mean, it's supposed to be the same thing. Robert, what type of function are we looking at here? Oh, actually. So what does that tell us about the rate of change? Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's got a multiplicative rate of change. Guys, we've been on this for, I know it's been a few days, but we've been on this for over a week. Look at your notes, study something. I can't, I cannot emphasize that enough. Some of us still need to work on our linear versus exponential homework. I had to put a whole bunch of people's names down on the list. Yeah, that green one right there, Robert. I put a whole bunch of people on the list for having not completed it, I don't think. Well, you gave me a zero for it, I think. No, that's hard. Actually, I don't know if I have finished grading that, so that's one other thing I need to grade. That would be the issue with that. So I haven't put that in the list yet, but I already know, just having glanced at how many I have, there's a whole bunch of us that have not turned it in. That would be the practice you need to be able to do this. Come on, it's exponential, so it has what type of rate of change, Ralston? Am I multiplying 0 0.02? No, they added it. They're adding it. Times. Okay. Anyone see another equation that's pretty close? The third one. The third one. What's the issue there, though? What are they multiplying by in that equation? Seven. Seven. Is that are we supposed to be multiplying by seven? No. No. What are they supposed to be multiplying by? So let's reword that. One, one, divided one divided by seven or one seventh. That's how I would have written it. Times one seventh raised to the x. And there's a reason why I would do this. Devin, do you remember what this number right here is always going to be in that equation? Where that's coming from? Okay, while you're trying to find that sheet, I'm going to call on you to do the other number. Uh, Caroline, what's that first number? What's the first number? No, what does this number represent? Huh? What number is that for the function? It is a y value. Which one? I mean, technically, it's the fifth one in that table. Okay, what's that starting point called? Thank you. We have a y-intercept. We know that because x is equal to what? Zero. Zero. We've got a y-intercept there. x is equal to zero. We're starting with the y-intercept. That's why a couple of us found that 0 0.02 or the 149th because there's a y-intercept. You've got to know that we have a 1 7th or a 149th as a y-intercept. Okay? So, Devin, what is this number right here? Do you see the number one seventh anywhere up here? Come on, use your words. Describe it. On the right hand side. Okay, so right on the right here. That's the number you're talking about. I see it somewhere else. Right there on the outside. I also see it up here. And I could also put it here. And also put it here. What is this right here? There we go, that's our rate of change, right? And if it's an exponential function, what type of rate of change is it, Brianna? Uh, multiplicative. Multiplicative. Does anyone remember the name of that multiplicative rate of change? Common ratio. Common ratio. That's a common ratio. And again, if we are repeatedly multiplying, how are we going to show the fact that we are repeatedly multiplying? The exponent of x. Okay? You have to know where these things are coming from. You will consistently struggle to write these equations. Even though I've already given you the equations, you will consistently struggle to write these equations if you don't know what these things mean. I cannot emphasize that enough. And I've already spent two days on block, which is almost an entire week on the period system, on those concepts. If you're still struggling with it, come into tutoring, watch the videos on YouTube. I can't tell you enough. 
because I know some of us have already watched the Squid Games and Midnight Mass and every other show that you could possibly find, every anime you could possibly find on Netflix, all right? You can watch YouTube for 20 minutes if you're struggling with a certain skill. You can get off of TikTok for 20 minutes if you're struggling with a certain skill. You can sit here in enrichment and ask questions if you are struggling with a certain skill. I'm getting frustrated that we're seniors in high school and we're still not taking advantage of the stuff to, to study and to learn. There's a handful of us that are learning and growing without having to study, and that's awesome. However, I can go ahead and tell you right here and right now that everything I learned well, I had to study for. Everything I learned well, I had to study for. you got to put in the work if you want to see the results. Anyone that's ever played a sport knows that principle. Anybody who's done a fine art knows that principle. The same is true for academics. Crack open your notebook. Study. I cannot tell you that enough. All right, moving on from there. Again, to define the function, the biggest things. And so we know the principle that we need the rate of change. We know that, but we don't know the language of the rate of change which means we need to study that some more. You have notes on it, go and look at them. And someone even did a great note here for common ratio. Now, common ratio is specifically for what type of function? Exponential, exponential right? You gotta know it's common ratio for an exponential. It's called a different type of rate of change for the other two types of functions. But you gotta know your rate of change. Let's actually get to today's lesson so that those of us who have to leave for co-op can get something out of today. If you don't have a textbook uh, because you forgot it, grab a blank one from the back and get it out and work out and take some notes on a separate sheet of paper. Oh, you don't need it. Did he give you a paper or anything? Any volume one? Any volume one. Right? You need module one, lesson two, the cat's out of the bag. That's M17 to M27, M127. And so we're going to work on that. After we get done with that, we're going to get back to the exploring features of parabolas. But we will not finish that today. I can go ahead and guarantee that. Okay? So that is what Miss Mommy started us on last week, and she will finish it up for us. All right, M1-17 to M1-27. Say it again. So that's what we'll get back to. Miss Mommy and I talked about it. We decided that you we need to finish this lesson to give us a better understanding of quadratics before we get to here. And so we'll go back to the stuff on the laptops probably slash hopefully Friday. Okay? So, here's the thing I need you to pay attention to. We have got to be able to identify patterns as linear, exponential, or quadratic. Yes, sir? M1-17 to M1-27. Okay? So, we have... Got to be able to identify linear, exponential, and quadratic using visual models, tables of values, or a graph. Uh, that's the, just the first element, though. The point of getting these patterns is if we can identify the type of function, it's easier to create the algebraic expression. But that does mean we need to know how those different functions are written. So pay attention to that. So this is what we looked at um, last week, I think last Tuesday. Golly, that seems so long ago. It's been over a week since we looked at this lesson. So the cat's out of the bag. Um, and we looked at these different relationships. We looked at Miriam, who owns a floor company. And what did we decide is the relationship about the next number of blocks that we would add? It should still be in our notebook. Okay, so go to M1-18. M1-17, I think, is the first page of the lesson. It was linear. Okay, say that again. It was linear. This was a linear relationship right here because we were repeatedly what? Adding. 
What representation could we create to help us identify the fact that it was linear? A table. Okay. Do not forget that tables are really powerful. And so we had our design number, and then we had our border, or the extra blocks for our border. So 1 and 0, 2 and 8, 3 and 16. And so we saw there that we were repeatedly adding 8. It is a linear function. Okay. By the way, what is that rate of change for a linear function called? Common difference. Okay, it can be called a common difference or a slope, right? Do not forget that your additive rate of change is that common difference or a slope. Rise divided by run. Okay? Then we quickly looked at the class president, vice president, and treasurer of a high school. Um, and so we looked at, they were telling their friends about who won the homecoming king election, which is very fitting for us with this week being homecoming and all. Um, what was the relationship we saw from day to day to day? It was multiplicative rate of change times how much? Two. Two, right? And so it was an exponential function. And then when we looked at Maureen and Matthew, what type of function was it? Quadratic. Quadratic. Um, and how did we know it was quadratic? Anybody? Um, I think you were multiplying it by, um, which one? Is a quadratic multiplicative? Well, Say again. No. No? What is it? Additive. It's what? Additive. It is additive. What type of additive? Is it constant additive? Are we adding the same amount every time? No. Linear additive. Linear additive. No, so it's plus 5, then it was plus 7, so what would our assumption be about the next one? Mm -hmm. Oh, plus 5 again? No, plus 9. Plus 9, right? We would add 2 more, and we drew it out. Hopefully you drew it out, and you can see that note on our piece of paper. If not, you should probably write this down. Right? Again, I'm not telling, saying this for my health. I'm trying to reestablish some things that we already knew. Okay? I'm trying to reestablish things we already knew so that you could be more successful in today's lesson. Yes. Uh -oh. And why do we know that this rate of change is linear? What's an important detail we need to pay attention to? How do we know that this is linear additive? Rate of change. Because you're added. Okay, but I mean, we can also have constant additive like we do over here, right? Because it's but not you add like the same number, number on that side. You're not adding the same number with that. Yeah, okay, but is it always linear additive if you're adding a different amount each time? No. Yeah. No. Nope. You can have. Uh, Quadratic additive, you can have cubic additive, quartic additive. We're not getting into that right now, but you can have all those different things. So, what made this linear? How much? Five, seven, nine, eleven. Plus two. Oh, yeah. You said that. I did say that. Right here. Look, what type of function has a constant additive rate of change? This is constant additive right here, so what came before it? Linear. linear. If we're going to say that this is a linear additive rate of change, that means it has a constant additive right here. Okay, so if we're going to say something is linear, that rate of change is linear, there had to be a constant before it, or a constant additive. Alright, so I think we already completed number one, right? Describing the pattern of new tiles that are added. Yes. Okay, it was what type of pattern? Um, linear. linear, thank you. And we knew it because it was constantly adding. Now, I do want to remind you that I asked you to, actually, did we complete number two? No. Does anyone have number two completed? I didn't miss start. <clears throat> no. We haven't started yet? Okay. Mm -mm. So really quickly, I do want to remind you, I asked you, and this might be just easier to redraw. Um, 
please notice they're not asking you to write an expression or an equation based on the design numbers. They're asking it based on an n by n square. So if we have a 1 by 1 square, there's the 1 by 1, and then I need the perimeter around it. You get over there, Caroline? Sorry. So then you would have your perimeter around there. If you have a 2 by 2, what's going to be on the center? Two squares. Two squares. There it is. With... There's my border. Mm -hmm. And then I might need a 3 by 3 square, or I would do a 3 by 3 square, which has 3 on the center. And then we would have the border. So remember, what we're trying to do is write an equation that represents the number of tiles in the border. That's the whole point here. Which means you need to find a pattern. If you're going to write an equation or an expression, you've got to find a pattern. So number two, let n represent the number of tiles along each edge of the square. Do we have any questions about what we're trying to do? Okay, I'll give you one more reminder before we work on number two. What type of function did you say this was? So, no, yeah, you're right, linear. So we, that should give us a good hint about where to start on an the equation. There are multiple ways to write this equation. In fact, I believe there's seven or eight, maybe it was just six, but I think it was seven or eight different ways to write this equation. So you can find any of them, but we already know it's linear, so start there. Let's get to work. Yeah. 